Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. In this video, I'm going to give you my top five bass trap placement mistakes and how to fix them. And although putting any bass trap in your room is better than none at all, you can definitely maximize their effectiveness by making sure you place them correctly. And so that's what I want to talk to you about in this video. But if you're about to take the plunge, if you're ready to take the next step and spend your hard-earned cash on some bass traps, either off the shelf or just materials to build your own, I want to help you out with my complete guide to bass traps and bass trapping that you can download for free at the link in the description. This is basically an encyclopedia of all the different bass trap designs out there. So obviously your standard insulation material based traps, but also resonance traps, helmets, resonators, membrane traps, combined traps, active traps, and it's all laid out nicely for you to understand how they work. So you really know what it is you're looking at if you're about to buy or build your own, how many you need in your room, how to place them correctly, and ultimately which type is right for you in your room. So before you make that decision, make sure you double check what it is you're actually investing in and if it's the right thing for you with my complete guide to bass traps and bass trapping at the link in the description. All right, let's jump right into the first bass trap placement mistake, and that is using only the vertical corners in your room. So stacking your bass traps floor to ceiling, but not using the corners where the wall meets the ceiling. And the reason you're probably doing this is because we see many people just doing this online, right? If you look up some pictures of people kind of installing their bass traps in their room, this is typically where they start. And it obviously makes sense. It's much easier to just stack bass traps vertically on top of each other than hanging them off the ceiling. The problem is that not all standing waves will be impacted by placing bass traps only in the vertical corners. And that leads you to potentially absorbing some part of the standing wave problem, of the room mode problem, but leaving other parts of it completely untouched. To make this a bit more understandable, I've loaded up the AMROC room mode calculator, which I'll link in the description as well. And I've just kind of loaded up some arbitrary room here as an example. What I want you to look at is this little kind of 3D uh, room diagram of the pressure distribution of each of the individual room modes. And the colors don't really mean anything. They are just areas of high pressure. In between these colored slabs, we have areas of low pressure. Now, the thing with your typical insulation material porous absorber base traps is that they are velocity absorbers, not pressure absorbers. And this is going to be relevant with one of my other mistakes that I'll talk about in a second. So these types of base traps become most effective when they are positioned in an in, in a, in a area of high sound velocity, which in theory at least is kind of in between these slabs. So what happens when you only put your base traps in the vertical corners is that you might actually miss some of the spots where certain room modes have their areas of high velocity. Yeah, so this is the lowest room mode. And let's just say this where this blue slab is, is the front of the room. You can see that if you place your base traps vertically in these two corners at the front of the room, this particular room mode won't be affected all that much by it. This is the next room mode kind of between the left and right walls, if you only place your absorbers in the vertical corners in the front of the room, then this particular standing wave won't be affected much by it. The floor to ceiling room mode is actually the first one that actually has an area of high sound velocity in the front corner. And so that will be the first one that will actually be affected by this type of placement. Now, as you go higher up in the spectrum, you'll actually see that the other types of room modes have slightly more complicated pressure distributions, and it'll be much easier to damp some of those even with the, uh, the panels only in the vertical corners. But as you can tell, some of them will still not really be affected by it. And so 
that's kind of the big problem with placing your panels only in the vertical corners. Obviously, the fix is to not only put your panels in the vertical corners, but also in the corners where the walls meet the ceilings. And that way you have the highest chance of actually hitting all the room modes and damping all the room modes, at least to some extent. Moving on to mistake number two, and that is using too thin panels for your base traps. Now, the reason this might happen is simply because of a completely understandable confusion about how these panels work. A lot of very thin absorbers are marketed as base traps. Unfortunately, this is very misleading. And the simple reason why you don't want to use thin panels for base traps is that they don't actually absorb any low end. So here I've loaded up the acoustic modeling porous absorber calculator and I've modeled two different types of absorbers. One of them, the blue line is four inches deep and the green line is six inches deep. And we can see that, to be honest, if you put these directly on the wall, neither of these really absorb any base at all. It's only when we introduce an air gap behind the panels that we actually make the absorber deep enough for it to become a base trap. And that is what typically happens when you place the panels across a corner. You inherently create an air gap behind the panel and that is what increases the absorption. And so this is what that looks like modeled in the porous absorber calculator. So here I've again modeled this four inch absorber, the blue line with a, an eight inch air gap behind it and I've modeled the six inch absorber with a, an air gap behind it. And again, the problem with two thin panels becomes apparent and which is the reason why you can't use thin panels across corners either, even four inch panels. The reason is that you start seeing this dip in absorption in the mid frequencies, which is a consequence of the relationship between the size of the air gap and the depth of the insulation material. If that ratio is too high, we start seeing this drop in absorption in the mid frequencies, which is what you want to avoid. That's why ideally you want to have at least a one-to-one -one ratio of air gap to insulation material depth. And then the entire thing, the entire depth basically becomes the depth of your base trap uh, which is also what gives you the absorption in the low end. Next up, mistake number three is not using enough base traps. This is slightly more difficult to show you, but from my experience, you need a lot more base trapping than you'd think. Four, six, eight panels is a great start, but they still won't fix your low end in any way at all. You'll be able to improve the low end response, but you will never get to a flat frequency response in the low end just by using, let's say, eight panels. One way to think about this is that low frequencies have extremely long wavelengths, right? Even 100 hertz has a 10 foot or three and a half meter wavelength. So just think about these gigantic waves sloshing around in your room and then you placing eight of these base traps in the room. Yeah, they will have a little impact, but there's no way in stopping those gigantic energy carrying waves with just eight traps. You really need base traps just about everywhere to control the low end properly. And in most rooms, there just isn't enough space to even do that. So the fix here obviously is to put as many base traps in the room as possible but also just to be realistic about what is possible in our typical home studios when we're working with these rooms that were me never meant to be music studios. They're just limited by the size and the space that you're willing to sacrifice. And that brings me to mistake number four, and that is using a too dense or too heavy insulation material. So why would you make this mistake? Well, once again, unfortunately, there are ready-made off-the-shelf products out there that are sold with uh, insulation material, with porous absorption material that is way too dense for the purpose. And here we see what happens when you use a material that is too dense. Both of these lines represent 
a six inch insulation material absorber with an eight inch air gap behind it. But the blue line uses a rather light material as you would recommend. This is something in the range of around 6,000 Pascal seconds per meter squared in terms of gas flow resistance. And the green line is the same configuration, but five times denser. And you can see just how much the absorption suffers. In fact, what this does not show is that the material is so dense that it actually starts reflecting the mids and the high end. That's something that's just not shown in this model. But so you get two problems from using a too dense material. You lose effectiveness and you actually start reflecting the mids and highs, which is definitely not what you want. So the fix is obvious. Make sure that you use an insulation material that matches the depth that you're going for. So the way to design your own base traps is to choose a depth in order to kind of decide what frequency range gets absorbed or how low down it gets absorbed. And then you check and make sure that you find a matching density that is low enough to basically give you the most effectiveness at that depth. And that brings me to my last mistake that you might be making with the placement of your base traps. And that is that you're trying to target certain room modes. Now, you might think that this is possible for, well, first of all, because there are actually tuned base traps out there that are very sensitive to placement. And you really need to nail the placement perfectly in order for them to give you the maximum effectiveness. But porous absorber base traps are not tuned devices. They do not work by targeting certain room modes. You might think that's the case from looking at the, the, the room mode calculator that I showed you before. But in my experience, this does not work. Base trapping with porous absorption is first and foremost a quantity game. Once you've got enough depth for these things to actually count and work, as base traps, the next metric that you need to get right is just sheer quantity. How much surface area are you covering in the room with these base traps? That's kind of the most important aspect to consider here, which also plays into mistake number three that I mentioned, not using enough base traps. With these porous absorber base traps, you want to get the depth right, and then you want to get the quantity right and then you start thinking about placement. All right, those are my top five mistakes for placing base traps in your home studio. Are you making any of these mistakes in your room? Are you only focusing on the vertical corners? Are you maybe using too thin panels? Do you have enough base traps in your room? Did you mistakenly use a material that is too dense? And are you maybe trying to target certain room modes? Well, now you know how to think about this and how to correct these mistakes. With that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.